So, welcome to the first ever online revenue forum. In this episode, we focus on the Baltic countries, but we promise to be inspiring even for our participants from outside the Baltics. This day, our excellent panelists and our special guests will talk about how to be a winner post COVID-19. Now, let us start with the introductions and let us go to our first speaker, Henrik Carlson. Hi, everyone. My name is Henrik. I'm from Benchmarking Alliance, and I have been invited here today to um, talk a little bit about uh, the hotel market data and the numbers in uh, the Baltic countries. So my name is Anna-Marie Gubanski, and besides the organizer of various seminars among which then the Revenue Forums, the Forum, uh, I'm also founder of Tacticon. Uh, Tacticon offers education, consultancy and technology for the hospitality industry. And today I will try to start to talk about how to work, form a winning strategy during pandemic from a revenue manager's point of view. So over to Kim. So, hi, <clears throat> nice to e uh, I'm Kim, I uh, have a background in the hotel and work nowadays for Info Hospitality. I'm right now in Stockholm, but I'm actually traveling to Estonia tomorrow, I'm very happy to say. First time after the pandemic, so talk to you soon. Hi, I'm Annika from Gestjoy, all based in Tallinn. The ones who don't know, uh, Gestio is a digital guest experience platform combining online check-in, upsell and feedback collection. Today at uh, this webinar, I'm uh, focusing more on contactless experience and how to achieve it. So stay tuned. Hi, hello. My name is Janis. I'm a CEO and a founder of the company Hotel Dog, specializing in hospitality advisory and consulting and today the topic will be preconditions for successful restart so good to see you all guys hello i'm gens i think i should start with it's always great to feel special as you mentioned special guest right here then thank you for that for those of you who don't know me i'm gens and rather yeah old bold guy already been in hospitality industry for more than 25 years um I've been involved in opening and taking over several hotels, starting from small boutique ones or 200 rooms plus. Now at the moment, I'm already, and for a couple of years, based in Tallinn, proudly in charge of Reds and Blue Hotel Olympia. Talk to you soon, guys. Okay, so now, um, we will take a look at some uh, numbers from uh, the capitals in the Baltics. Um, uh, and if we move on to my first slide, uh, I will also show you um, compared to the Nordic area that we also measure. So uh, looking at the Baltic capitals, uh, we see now that the first half of 2020, the drop in occupancy versus last year uh, spread between 83.8 and 86.6% in the Baltic capitals. This, we also see a similar drop in Helsinki and Copenhagen. Uh, also in Stockholm, the drop wasn't as big. Uh, in Stockholm, we see a drop of 77%. Of course, that's also big, but this smaller drop in Sweden might, uh, might be due to the easier restrictions that were set in, in Sweden. Uh, in my next slide, we will look at the um, first Baltic capital, and we start from the south, we look at Vilnius. So, of course, when we look at the first half of 2020, you uh, immediately see the big drop there in mid-March. The red bars here show Revpar, and the blue line shows the occupancy. And then it was really quiet for a couple of weeks. But around two weeks ago, we started to see some recovery in Vilnius and Revpar and occupancy slowly started to rise again uh, and has been doing since. Uh, moving on with the next slide, we go to Riga. Uh, we see the same pattern there. Uh, Riga came from a slightly higher level in occupancy, so the drop was uh, a bit bigger there. Uh, there has been small activity in Riga during uh, April and May. Uh, and in end of May, or uh, sorry, more rather mid-May, 
and we could see um, a small recovery starting in Riga as well. And here the occupancy is now closing up to 20%, uh, and we see the rev par uh, around 10 euros now, but still increasing. The next uh, slide shows Tallinn. Um, the same pattern here, as you see, Tallinn also uh, show a recovery. Slightly earlier, the recovery started in Tallinn, and it has been, uh, been quite stronger here. So we see now in Tallinn that the uh, occupancy is at least up on 20%. Um, and the rev par is now slightly above 10 euros. In Tallinn, we also measure on the books. Uh, so this is the business on the books uh, in the city for the coming year. And this uh, report is from June. Uh, so there will be actually a new reporting tomorrow, but in this uh, in these numbers from June, we see that July was then booked by 17%, August was booked by 29%, and uh, September, it doesn't show here on the slide, but it was uh, close to 40%. So the question is now, will these numbers stay, will there be cancellations, or will there be a pickup on top? of these numbers. And uh, considering uh, how it looked one month ago, it will be very uh, interesting to see uh, the numbers uh, later this week. For those of you working with On The Books, you will, of course, be able to monitor uh, these reports in the system. Uh, in this uh, last picture that I have, I also want to show you the difference between the segments. Uh, in this graph, you see, of course, the three capitals in, in the Baltics, Tallinn, Riga, and Vilnius, where we could see before that Tallinn is the city with the strongest recovery. But if we look at the leisure uh, destinations, Palno and Jurmala, that I've put together here in one concept as the red line, we can see that they have had a fantastic recovery during the past weeks. And this is something that we see in all the Nordic uh, markets. Uh, markets and hotels uh, that mainly offer leisure uh, activities, they have had uh, a lot quicker recovery than, uh, than hotels, depending on uh, business and conferences. So to summarize uh, my slides a little bit, recovery is here uh, in all the Baltic capitals, especially in Tallinn. It's, it's a bit stronger there. Uh, and it's especially strong in leisure-oriented hotels and markets. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to uh, write them in Q&A to me, and I will uh, give you an answer as quick as possible. Thank you. So, over to me. Thank you very much, Henrik. I presume that people are going to really love to, to look back to your presentation with, your, with the slides that you showed just now. So I have actually three points to make. Um, first of all, together we are stronger. So um, in order to, to, to uh, explain that, we need to, 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 to tell you like most of our customers, they are like privately owned hotels with their hotels have been being into their um, family, maybe sometimes for generations. And I think you will all um, recognize this. They saw their whole business disappear just in one day. Uh, the moment we found out about the pandemic, uh, we, we all called them all and just said just like one thing, okay, you know what, we're going to go through this together. We are stronger together and we are with you all the way. For us, it wasn't really a commercial decision. This is about in our DNA because we love to help hotels. But this was also for us a learning point because we saw that this togetherness that actually meant also that we, first of all, we kept all our customers uh, because they saw us as a uh, asset and not, not as a cost, but also we've been able to help them really well. A lot of the discussions we have with them right now are non-revenue management related. It's like scheduling, cutting costs, uh, but also maybe pricing. Now, what I think we can learn from this is that together we are stronger and we kind of maybe uh, can take this time and have some kind of a cooperation together. Uh, I can give you an example, and that is in the Benelux, uh, where they start now a, an OTA, so a distribution channel, especially for boutique hotels. 
So can you imagine this? This is actually like competitors working together in order to, to, to create a distribution channel with the uh, opportunity to maybe drive direct. Now, that might be so, I don't know, historic hotels in the Baltics, for instance, we could actually make our own channel, but it requires that we work together. The second point, actually, I think that what we know is, yes, a pandemic is uh, devastating, but we need to try to focus on the factors that we can control. There's a few things we know. This summer is going to be different. Already to start, uh, starting to see what, what is going to happen. Uh, most of our guests will be inbound, so traveling within the country and coming from countries close by. Uh, so that means also that we have a few guests that had, had been planning to book a longer break farther away, but they now save the money for their tickets. Furthermore, we see that the guests that are staying at our hotels, they are willing to spend more because, I mean, they've been locked up for weeks. So they, they kind of are into, uh, well, glad to be able to, to enjoy life again. Um, there's a lot of short breaks being booked, and we see that most of the hotels that are not city center related, they, they, they get the most of the uh, demand right now. So it's the city center hotels that are struggling the most, but they can get something out of it. Um, and it, it means it's like the shorter breaks, mostly actually during weekends. Um, but it's very short uh, lead times. It's just like one day to a, a prior to arrival or maybe on the same day. So what does this mean for us? Well, actually, we need to understand there's a new type of customer coming into us. So what, are, what do they want from us? Do you have what they want from us? Uh, and do they know that you have what they want from us? Are you in the channels where they are booking you uh, and looking for you? Um, what is your message there? Now, um, the third part is actually um, automatically related to this. We need to invest into knowledge and, dis and, and, and technology. Uh, and that means that we need to increase our profit margins. Uh, I mean, we need to increase the, um, the, the revenue as good as we can. So we need to capture the demand. Uh, and for that, I think excellent revenue management is uh, needed. From our part, we have developed a revenue manager system, which is actually uh, prior, uh, um, uh, our daily diary, which we always updated on in Excel. But now we found that we had more and more and more customers. Uh, this updating in Excel, that took us quite some time. So we put that online and it gives a very good opportunity for a revenue manager to put in his or her um, strategy and the system then does all the tactical things. So it calculates the, the, the price according to the strategy that the hotel has set. The other thing is also we need to try to decrease our distribution cost. For that, we also offer a distribution platform and we think that we have a benefit there. We are revenue managers. We understand how the mappings between the, the various systems need to go. Uh, and we understand distribution strategies. Uh, so we really believe that we can just like help hotels decreasing this cost that, is, uh, that has been increasing over the last number of years. Uh, so that was actually all I had to say. Uh, any questions, you know where to find me. Um, but let me just maybe put it over to the next speaker. So, hi. Okay, so my point is basically this. Um, this is the time to renew and this is the time to think three, yes, for sure. Uh, I'm going to uh, touch some points of the same as Anne-Marie did, actually. Uh, I was considering to change the name of this presentation to Hospitality Agility because I think that's what is needed. It needs to be swift, but you also need to be both a leader and a follower at the same time. What we do know, one of the few things we do know is that the market will be basically the same number of hotels and they will be competing on, let's say for argument's sake, 50 to 70% of the previous number of travelers. This means that you must try to predict your future and all prediction is based on knowledge and knowledge is what you should get out of your systems. Uh, 
your present setup of segments and rights is most probably made by your predecessors under totally different um, situations in most cases. Um, but even if it's from last spring, it's still too old actually. You must be more ag agile or you will die. If you don't predict, uh, predict a new traveler as well, someone else will probably do it better and win more of them. To understand, you must both have rely on prognosis and statistics. Just have something like 60% of business travelers for sure will tell you nothing. You must try to break down every number as much as you can to really see what is happening out there. And also, where are you visible? Uh, bookings and hotels for sure. But as actually Anne-Marie already said, but there are so many more specific OTIs depending on what kind of hotel you are. Wildlife, historical, boutique, exclusive, budget, whatever. Those shoppers that are there are already interested in your category and more open for arguments on where you stand out. And please do not forget the GDSs. There are so many travelers, a lot of the uh, business travelers that are not allowed to book anywhere else. Make sure that adjust your bookings from the distribution channels directly. Um, not day before um, arrival. It, it, it's, um, it's too late. It will mess up your prognosis and also depending on how your statistics is created in your systems, it can heavily damage that forever. And also, also as Anne-Marie mentioned, why are so many hotels afraid of just evaluating what's on the market? This is really the time to see what is out there, what you can do, to contact some vendors and just give an overview of what's happening. I promise we won't bite you and we will not push you up in the corner and force you to sign a 10 year slave contract. It, it's, it's an open and free market and there's so much to look at. Uh, most of all, I would say that this is really the time to seriously evaluate revenue or at least pricing systems if you haven't already. Here you will need to be more agile than ever to understand the market more or less in real time to be able to sell at, at the right price and the right price is not always lowering to follow but to be as priced as possible. Each reservation should give you as much as possible. And when selecting pricing tools, you would rec I would recommend that you look at those that do actually look at the market and what's on the book, not only work on rules and algorithms. We do see that many of those systems have hard time predicting it correctly, uh, meaning not only lowering your prices when the market is going bananas as it is right now. And looking at investments, the most important is not the upfront cost. The professionals that are doing the big RFIs are always chasing the long-term cost because that is what you will pay in the long term and what they include and even more so hidden fees what's included new interfaces changes in license new users support etc the three things you should look at as these three abbreviations the tco the total cost of ownership for maybe three or five years the return of investment and the value for money and most important, it's hard to be better than the systems you choose. To select a vendor is not like betting on a horse in a race. It's like breeding and being in symbiosis with your own horse. You will never be more successful than your horse can make you. Lastly, guest self-service uh, was hot already in February, but now it's a must. Going from being self-service uh, functionality at low-end hotels, now I've all five-star hotels want to give the alternative. Many modern PMS systems on the market is um, uh, giving this kind of thing, functionality, maybe even free of charge. And there are excellent add-ons on the uh, market in all price ranges. You must look at that as well. I want to end with a quote by Marie Curie, the, two, the Times Nobel Prize winner and inventor of the theory of radioactivity. Nothing in life is to be feared. It's only to be understood. And now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, always a pleasure to follow your presentations. I'm here to give a bit more insights about the new uh, guest uh, facing uh, solutions. Something that has moved from uh, nice to have uh, to must have category. 
your guest is changed or i mean is about to change i mean like Kim was saying be ready for it and Anne marie was saying the same there have been a lot of changes recently and uh, some uh, are here to stay first thing uh, is an online check-in so what is this creature in the baltics uh, most of the hotels uh, don't really have the capability yet to provide an online check-in or if you don't work with info <laughs> but still don't think it's an overkill uh, financially um, and in action before even uh, investing into door locks mobile apps kiosks i mean start using an online check-in card a very simple thing yeah, I mean, with case joy, I mean, for the active users, uh, we, we have it. They can enable it with less than 30 minutes and uh, start trying out how well it gets uh, welcomed by the guests. So instead of paper forms, do it online. Like I said, it's not really an overkill to, to try it out. But online check-in is just one aspect of uh, being contactless. Try mapping out uh, the entire uh, digital guest journey. Once you've done that, then make sure, I mean, whatever method you've chosen, that it actually supports engaging uh, with the guests along the way. Do you have COVID-19 related information on your homepage? If not, do it. We work with many booking engines who've given excellent tips uh, to their customers about uh, what to add on their homepage. I will share some with a follow-up email. Do you let your upcoming guests know about healthy procedures prior to arrival? We see that the opening rate of such emails is nearly 80%. Guests they want to be sure that their safety comes first. Unfortunately, it's not over yet. Don't ask them to spend more time at the reception than they have to. Reception is still there, but the way I see it, it's more for a social aspect. Communicating with guests prior to arrival also helps to reduce the amount of cancellations. You might not like it, what I'm going to say, but there will be a little price war. Be prepared how to stand out from the competition and how to create loyal customers. If you think you don't have anything to upsell, think again. Use upsell for de delivering breakfast to the room. Ask guests to schedule a breakfast time prior to arrival. Join forces with local activity providers. They're all dying to work with you. Engage with your guests and they will spread the word online. Stay contactless, but still personal. My key takeaway would be that try mapping out your digital guest journey and see what's missing there. Thank you and I will pass it on to the next speaker. Hi, hello, one more time, everybody. So my topics is about successful restart, and the first one is the safety and hygiene. So, and the main message basically is that it's still there, it's not canceled. We saw after first hotels opening, uh, we saw some more, uh, worrying, thing, worrying issues that some hotels were operating just like nothing happened, like, like business as normal. So, and, but now what I see when the business is coming back and the guests are coming back and the higher occupancies, even those who have uh, really protocols and certificates and everything actually start to easy, easy on these measures. Yeah. And it shouldn't be the case because that's really not over. And I don't think any hotel really would like to have uh, the, another outbreak somewhere. Uh, I understand that for the bigger hotels, like when you have three, four hundred people in the breakfast, so it's not very easy to disinfection the, the coffee machine button after every client. Yeah, but still see what you can do, and there is a lot great measures uh, for the bigger hotels who are operating with the full uh, with the breakfast with the, with the uh, full order menus. So, and there's a great examples out there. And then very important thing is as well, don't forget about communication. So there is, we see the nice movies on uh, on uh, social media, we see some information on the web, but as well, don't forget the OTA. So there is still many hotels which informing the guests on OTA is only what you cannot get due to COVID, what services are not available, but uh, it's very important to as well to, to show and to tell the guests what measures you are taking to uh, to guarantee their safety and, 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 and health. So, and sure, that all involves costs, they all involves costs, and that's why as well my suggestion before now opening, really evaluate your costs versus your potential forecast and your income. 
uh, because sure there is the atmosphere that the hotels are in a bad shape and are doing not so well and that the price actually have, have to go down but we all know there is a extra civil spending the extra on detergents on disinfections masks packaging stuff and when i see offers coming out that you breakfast included for every guest in the room or we spend dinner you serve dinner in on a balcony that will involve cost and the question is that really calculated will you be able to to cover up that to break even at least uh, especially after after the low season we see the uh, high season sorry we see the the regional hotels the the resort hotels they're pretty doing fine the demand is rising as we saw from the Henrik's presentation and uh, but especially for the city hotels if i see now city hotel four star selling three, 30 euro 35 euro so with all the measures will they be able to break even and just kind of what uh, i want to tell that it will be not very good that after a couple of months is operating you you need to please close down again yeah? as well another issue see who is your guest yeah uh, because the segments will be changing as well maybe not for resort hotels but particularly for the city hotels for the hotels around the cities 50 kilometers who are specializing maybe on a small medium conferences will be the same client there so just as well i suggest before openings to check to see to how and and to find out how the guests how your co uh, corporate clients are feeling so what they're going to do and the final one, uh, very important in my opinion, is the distribution. So I thought uh, in the beginning that will be very good learning because a lot of hotels were complaining that uh, how the OTAs behaved during that crisis and how they were changing the rules. But now I see it's, it's, it's I think it's even worse at some point. Yeah, we see if I open the booking room, I see everybody pays is happy to pay them three percent on thumb up. Uh, as I think on Genius, there are even more hotels as before, and we're happy to give 10% off. And uh, as well, on the OTA sites, we see better deals and better conditions as in a hotel website. And even a surprise to see that on a hotel website, you can get only non-refundable deal, and OTA, you're happy to give them uh, very super flex flexible conditions. So I really suggest uh, that to take a look and now is, the, now is the point you can turn a little bit off. I just read some uh, research that according to the research that 87% of the potential clients who are looking for a hotel room, they checking as well the website of the hotel. So that's our chance to get them direct. Yeah, and that should be worked. So my main message is uh, if we cannot cut off, uh, if we cannot stop the feed the elephant, at least we have to reduce the, the food supply for the elephant. So that's thank you. That's that's from my side. And now let's move the, to our special guest, which I think is the, one of the most interesting part of the, our webinar. Uh, so it's always good to talk uh, about the things, how you should do, and it's always interesting to listen to different experts. But I think the most interesting is to really to talk to the people from the operations uh, who made through the, all the pandemic crisis. And I would say from what I heard, uh the whole, the gm with whom we're gonna talk uh, made at, at, at the best so and therefore welcome Gint Zirnex, the general manager of uh, radisson blue uh, olympia hotel so and let's let's talk to Gint. let's get from Gint some insights so how he survived what his plans how he see it so hi Gint. hi hi how are you doing uh, it's rather good, you know. Okay, we have a little bit storm and rain outside, but I think in uh, mostly fine. I think a lot to do. Okay. All... Yeah, kids. So, can you tell us at the first though? How was your first reaction when the, all this struck in when the <laughs> pandemic came in? So, how you how you felt? What are, what are your first thoughts? How were your reactions? I think yeah, it was. I think it was the beginning of the March when we understood that the situation will be worse than we expected. Yeah. I think particularly last week of February after 24, then the massive cancellation started. And particularly when it comes to all kinds of business groups, what we did, we checked with other countries, what is happening. And of course the same, okay, you can't say this, but okay, we received the same message that, that it's everywhere. Cancellation took place in full swing, you know, of course it was, yeah, full of frustrations moment, you know, cause you simply were not able to predict anything. And sometimes actions you agreed on were rather irrelevant at the evening, the same day, because uh, things change so rapidly, so quickly. But no matter what, you know, we, we just had open communication with all the MPs and owners. We, we, 
we immediately understood one thing, you know, whatever happens, we need to take care for employees, for clients, and yeah, having this commitment from both sides, I think that's what really helped us to overcome this first stress or emotions we, we experienced. Great, great. So maybe maybe you can take uh, tell us more about how you generally addressed it, addressed all the issues and what actions you take through the through the crisis month. So how you lead your hotel through? Mm, yeah, I believe again this is my way of thinking and doing the things. And I think some of the guys also who are going to call and me for years already. But first and the most, it's you need to talk. You need to share the information. And you, Jens, mentioned this as well. You know, you need to talk, share, and listen to your colleagues and try to find, I would say, short-term solutions at this moment. When it comes to me, I would say that I'm in a bit privileged situation because I'm surrounded with smart, educated people and it's rather, and we are rather quickly able to agree on common goal. It helps a lot. Also, you need to brainstorm, you need to think out of the box, and then also it's good to have, you know, some professionals or people, who, people around whom you're friends, whom you talk with this. Honestly, I can refer to you, my friend, you know, my wife is still sometimes unhappy because she perceived that I'm talking to you more than with her when it comes to the work, you know, really. <laughs> but it's true, and this is not just having the talks, but again, I can talk to you even maybe we can find something, and I can, I have find some hints and tips as well what to do. For me, I think it's uh, in crisis situation, this is the, I actually believe that this improves us as human beings. We are intent to analyze deeper, and understand our own capabilities, values, and goals. And then for me, of course, when we kept this open communication with my people around me, you know, each and every employee, then it was really, I was, I was truly encouraged by seeing how we dealt with these uncertainties around us. But then I think maybe I'll just mention a few steps what we did immediately. I think that already mid of the February, we acted really quickly. And I believe that we adapted this new situation rather quickly as well, because already End of the February, we had the hand uh, disinfection items in, in the building. Already beginning of March, we had also protective screens in place. And we really took immediate actions to not only spread the message that we are doing something, because things are changing, but we act. And also improving by several procedures when it comes to disinfection in general and all those small things. By this, we were able to really gain the loyalty for the clients. Several clients, even saw what we are doing and having a discussion with them, decided to stay with us over the entire and, and, and this pandemic period with us. Also, we were able, able to convert some potential future business by putting those activities in place immediately. Second one, of course, as I mentioned, that's information flow. I think beginning with the end of the February, no, beginning of March was really coming in like for all the resources and channels. And we quickly created WhatsApp group when it comes to management. That's what we call the crisis group. Then we were really actively using this, and this really was the most effective way how to communicate and how to implement some several things immediately, you know, because we received during the day, you know, that no, we received during the evening. I think it was Friday, even I think five o'clock, that fitness center and the swimming pool should be closed today by 11 o'clock, you know. Then, of course, this was like you need to return everything around as well, do actively. And it's worked pretty well. People were informed and we, we, we dealt with this. Then also, as I mentioned, we kept this open communication with each and every employee. We use internal Facebook group, also internal mailing, and we just keep them informed what we are doing. Also, they know what we are to do. And, uh, and they felt safe. And this was really also, we had this, this uh, yeah, also this communication chain back to us as well, that, that they were ready really that sacrifice something for the future. I think during the, beginning of the no fourth week to the march we already knew that government will step in with some kind of support when it comes to the to the employee salaries again we informed each and every employee that we will go for this one and yeah the engagement dedication as i mentioned to sacrifice something for the future was really amazing and i think the success was the success was that we openly communicated all those things of course we started some juggling with vacation sick leaves and and uh, and then also minimum staffing per departments just to close months of March because everything happened so quickly that we never expect this, but we need it act immediately. Then following that, we started to put some plans together how to improve the bottom line because we clearly understood that we're not going to survive with the government support. And yes, we put some projects on, on hold as well immediately, 
and we start to plan our life is reduce workload. Here, I think success was that we started, I would say, from right end, that we started with me. And then as well, when we, when we started with me, my management followed unconditionally and also stuff alike. And the next, of course, yeah, we tried to minimize our fixed costs. And that was also a success because we just pulled out uh, meetings with each and every your supplier we are working with, also including the outsource companies. And at one point, we were able to agree on something acceptable for both of all parties. And then, yeah, and also, and by here, I would comment that when it comes to this government support, then I really support this Estonian approach because you no, know, they really stepped in and said they'd be ready to cover 70% average salary with limit of 1,000 euros gross. At the same time, I as employer had the right to involve the people when needed to do something. And uh, this wasn't the case in Latvia, Lithuania, but saying that we even managed during those couple of months pull out some projects which we wouldn't consider to do in normal life because you would need to deal with displacements. And also, as I mentioned, that we were able to agree with outsource companies uh, that uh, they just put their employees on the whole, but we were able also to assign those works for our own employees. That's definitely, again, delivered or provided some decent savings. And also, this was earnings from the guys official. And then small other things, you know, the closing down the floors, working with BMS, and just to save on HLP and all those small things. I think what most of hotels did as well. But that would be, I think, the first approach over there is the things and what we went through. So, Al, uh, what do you think is, what would be your takings from all this? What you would keep uh, keep on rolling after the COVID time, kind of? What different strategies taken from that you will, you will uh, carry on? You know, we, we see that some things would be changed as well. We're going to keep the future as well, you know, the less simple things, starting also from cleaning the kitchen, you know. In good times, we had all the also companies dealt with this, but now we can see that we can do it ourselves. And, you know, also this environment and also mentality during the day improves as well, how you're taking the other kitchen. But I think we all need to understand that COVID-19, this pandemic and related restrictions to the travel and business individual movement are having significant significant impact on the industry, and that is for sure. But what we don't know, we don't know for how long the pandemic will last as well. How much worse this could get as well, because you mentioned it's not over yet as well. And how as well, I don't know, at the end, we also don't know the final net impact on the general economy as well around us. I believe as well, and Henrik mentioned too, you know, the, uh, the countries with large portion of domestic demand should see occupancy rise earlier. But unfortunately, let's be real, this is not the really case with Baltics, except for the summer months for the, for the, for the seaside hotels, I think, or leisure hotels, yeah. And then, yeah, I think it, it, will, be, it will be tough. Yeah, uh, I, would say, I would say, yeah, go on. Uh, yes, go ahead. No, for the domestic market, okay. though, I think the Lithuania is pretty good shape, is it? They have 53% domestic market to be, be, be before COVID already. Uh, this, no, yeah, but what I, yeah. this is really a good number. I, I didn't expect that it's so big. But of course, that no, at the moment, focus goes, I think, for us. When you, from the sales perspective, we will focus, I believe, not only now for a couple of months, but until the end of the year, we will try to focus more on domestic market and neighboring countries. You know, And for, again, Tallinn, as Hendrik shared share the data, you know, we see this slight higher increase in open level already, but it's because of the Finnish border open at the moment. And it's really... Thanks God, it helps a lot as well for, 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 for the hotels. Also, I think when it comes to the future, we still need to understand that rather high fixed expense or costs will remain in place regardless of the revenue level. Therefore, multifunction positions and flexibility will be the key success for hotel. I think in general, even when they're talking to my hotel, which is close to 400 rooms, we we already adapting and changing this mindset, you know, that uh, we are running this hotel as family business more. And that's that means that everybody is ready to step in and support each other when needed. We have the shifting to the departments and have ME and breakfast and the, and the restaurant. And it helps a lot, of course. And it's great to see these people engagement that they're ready for this. They do understand in what kind of crisis we are still in. Then, yeah. And of course, we'll still will continue to operate with the reduced workloads and we'll still will focus on minimizing the costs. And also, we are already allocating time with active small projects that we believe could improve us as well, future potential for the revenue streams. That's our approach for future. Uh, 
Okay, great. Thank you, Gims, for the insights. Maybe last, like, your, your wish to hoteliers for the after COVID period. No, I think, guys, you know, it's a, it's a participants who are maybe sometimes a little bit tired of the, all the so many Skype calls or, or the webinars happening. But I think from this particular one, I think it's really, it makes sense for me because I see really, it's always good to and it's important to understand where do you stand. I think it's really, guys, if you want to loop and see what is happening around other cities and markets, get in contact with Henrik, you know, really. He got really decent information and my challenge provided it's really in the detail. As also referring back to Kim and, uh, and and then Anik said, guys, it is the right, the right time to review your system for you have in place. Maybe really with decent investments, you can improve something as well. And again, to, to, to do this, you need to get in contact with the guys and get the possible way. And then the, um, again, the idea is that you need to analyze this in detail and you really need to then from financial perspective to compare with something, you need to have some numbers, I think. Yanis, as you mentioned, Take care of your inventory, really, and take care also that make sure that the best available rate is in your web homepage. This is also because people are checking this one, you know, really, and people are not really happy and sometimes even frustration involved that they can find that booking can be 20 euros cheaper than you selling your homepage. You know, those small basic things, you know, we just need to take care of this one. And this is the right time to do. Also, as Andre mentioned, you know, we all in this together. And again, and, and, and you know, and we can master this situation by acting with empathy, respect, and solidarity as we can. And you mentioned as well, nothing is over. We still will deal with uncertainties, but we should stay active. We should take care of ourselves. We should stay healthy. And I think, you know, for me, it helps that I try to find at least one thing every day to be grateful for. And this is my approach, you know, really. And this is our new reality. But guys, we still need to keep this positivity in as well. And some day it's going to be over. Then that's a question mark. But only as team, this is clearly for me that you can pull it out. Yeah, that's from my side, I think. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Gids. Okay. Uh, time maybe for a few questions. I put in a few notes to self to ask also to, to all the, the, the speakers. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, a lot, Gins, for your insights. It was really, really, really wonderful to see and to hear. I think also you have this togetherness and this insecurity that you try to 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 uh, to, to work with. And I think that we all are, are understanding uh, what, what it is you say. Um, a question like, how long is this going to take? Uh, I can say my husband is a doctor. He, I'm, I'm, I'm asking him every five minutes I see him because, I mean, I'm, I'm already fed up with this. But what uh, medical um, institution thinks also is, uh, or maybe not only just like the, 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 the people working with pandemics, is that these restrictions, uh, they're being released. We're slowly going back to our own life. I mean, we have a goldfish red memory. I think we, we go back to our lives as soon as we, as we, as we can. It's a level of restrictions that, are, that is going to be important for us. Maybe even more that, than the question like, is pandemic com coming back? But also, can governments force our guests or, or their, their, uh, the, the people living in their country to, to, to go back to restrictions? Uh, because you can only keep it this long. And that is going to be an interesting question in the future as well. Now, I had actually a few questions, maybe. First of all, to Hendrik, uh, this on the books report reminds me, I think, uh, what you need for it is um, at least five hotels in the destination, or is it different for the on the books hotels? How does it work? How how can you get it into your destination? It's a bit different for for the on the books since it's future looking data. It's a bit more sensitive, so uh, we need to have at least around ten, depending on the um, depending on the mix of ownership and and brands in the city. But uh, but around ten, I would say. Uh, and it's only sold rooms that, that is being reported. Okay, sold rooms, no revenue yet. No revenue yet. Cool. Uh, sounds interesting. At least you, you can show very, very interesting reports with it. Um, and it's information that we really love. Yeah, and, and right now it's, it's an important piece of information to, to actually keep track of the on the book situation. Like the rooms on the books now in the summer, will they still be there? Will they be cancelled? Will we see a pickup? 
uh, and this is something that you can track uh, as a participant in uh, in hotel on the books. Yeah, I think it's, it's quite interesting. I don't know. Uh, well, for our hotels, what we really see is that there, there's there's demands coming for for autumn already, but there's also it's very insecure business. It's being cancelled uh, quite a lot. So we don't really dare to 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 calculate with all the the demand we have in all the on the books we have in right now for after summer. Uh, and that is also then maybe interesting to see, like, okay, how is that in relation to your report? Um, yeah. So, um, another thing actually is um, um, the conference rooms. Uh, we see actually that, and your your presentation did that uh, said that also, Hendrik. It's 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 really the meeting se um, segment that is that is suffering a lot. Uh, yeah. Maybe put it to the, to to, the, to our uh, group of of expert panelists. What do you think we need to do with conference rooms? Do, do you think that what what kind of demand do you see in the future? I have an, an answer to that, but I thought maybe you you have an intelligent thing to say about it. Well, since no one says something, so. Um... <laughs> Well, I probably don't know much more than anyone else, but I, I would say it, 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 you could see from two sides. On one hand, this is not something that's going away in the short term, no. But on the other hand, there is a demand for meetings. We must meet. We must, from my side business, we must interact. And I think we will find the fantastic thing is that nature finds its way. I think it's something, it's a quote from like Jurassic Park or something like that. Nature finds its way. We will evolve in the way to make it sure that we will do it again. It, it, we must meet, we must have conferences. We It will happen for sure. I don't know exactly how, but I'm 100% sure it, it will come back. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if I, if I can make a prediction myself, I think you are completely right. Um, we have this tendency that we want to meet. Uh, I think actually uh, what might happen is, um, and we've seen the, the trend already starting before this COVID-19 period, uh, that is that uh, corporate uh, companies are traveling less because they already, uh, prior to this, they already found out that, you know, we can meet online. But this period has really just like, like, increase the level of, of technology, but also our knowledge in, in, in using this type of uh, technology. Uh, but I mean, there's always this need for, for, for meetings, like first time meetings or kick off meetings, or from my part, when we have um, meetings with potential customers, the first one is always live. We always go to the hotels, then maybe follow up meetings. Instead of going traveling there, we can now do much more online. So I think part of it will disappear, but I think also there's going to be a different type of demand for our uh, meeting rooms. And I think actually the interesting part is uh, that I, I think that that special meeting rooms as, uh, will 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 help us. It's like meeting rooms that that help us make feel uh, makes feel special, um, maybe more cozy or something. Apart from bigger meeting rooms, which is the other trend I'm going to see, because I think that for the time being, we still have, we'll still need to have this uh, distance between us. And for that, we need bigger rooms. So I think it's two things. Uh, yeah, I think I can comment also from operational side. I think it's a uh, how I can't say act to, but for instance, today we had a full meeting rooms booked as well. The thing is when it comes to operation, as Janis mentioned, how seriously hotels are, hotel, hotels are following those introduce new, new safety protocols, everything. Because we are honestly dealing now with capacity reduced by twice. Because we try to respect those two meters all meeting rooms. And of course, from the business perspective, you need to count that there'll be at least 50% reduction when it comes to the revenue. But it's uh, fully confirmed as well that it is moving back. It's still more the domestic uh, market, but it's rather gets more and more active on a weekly basis. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So our next question uh, about uh, speaking about Riga, how long will it take uh, for the market to get back to 2018 ref bar levels, knowing that 2019 already witnessed a drop? Uh, I might comment on it. Um, yeah, I think 
Uh, what the experts are saying uh, is that we we might see that there's a recession coming on and recession might be a bit, bit bigger than than um, forecasted earlier you can see after big disasters like uh, maybe 9 11 that also uh, had a big influence on our um, market situation um, i think that that will impact us uh, a little bit uh, so, going back to 2018 ref bar levels, um, I think that, that it, it, it will take some time, uh, but I don't really, I'm, I'm, I'm always a positive person. I, I, I think that we can come close to 2018 levels, um, maybe already next year, if we uh, uh, get our strategies right. And I think for that also, we need to try and avoid this, this price war that, that Annika predicted so rightfully. Um, so insecurity usually costs money. And I think, and I know it's, 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 it's easy for me to say, uh, try to avoid your price droppings. I mean, because it doesn't, it doesn't really help you. Uh, from our point, uh, for the hotels, from us, that, that, that we are, uh, when we are price leaders, we know that we can control the market. We just keep our prices to a reasonable level, especially on the longer lead times, because we don't really know what is going to happen with that. Uh, on the, on the uh, markets when we are not the price leader, so we need to follow maybe a price leader that is then dumping. The thing that we use is maybe our upgraded rooms and try to see if we can keep it to a level that we are happy with and just like sell our uh, smaller rooms maybe to corporate travel. Um, so what we tested is maybe have our, our single rooms at a higher, lay, uh, higher rate uh, when the corporate contracts are booked on that one and then we know that it disappears. But then outside on the public um, channels, I think this is the way to do. Um, so it's it's difficult to predict. Uh, short answer to a to, to a big a, a, lot, a long answer to to a short question. It's difficult to predict, uh, but I think that we need to 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 try and get our strategies right. Yeah, and I also wanted to make make a comment on this one uh, that. Um, in a way, I think hospitality is an emerging market now <laughs> because there was a huge drop, everything was closed. Uh, so, I mean, now we can only go upward. So just maybe take it uh, slowly. I mean, uh, most likely most of the hotels are continue to work with a reduced number of people. So, uh, I mean, it's it's been said like several times already, but like strategies uh, go over your technologies because you, you might actually say you save some money also by by just going through like every single service contract you have and just replace some things with technology i mean of course naturally not everything but just try to be creative and also kind of the the, the last comment uh, about the conference facilities i do think as all well the people will travel less because everybody have now discovered zoom so uh and that's i think will stay but also i think like i know that in estonia we already have those quite cool concept hotels uh, where i mean conference room can can facilitate i don't know yoga classes or like uh, again i mean uh, the traveler will is changed so i think even uh, uh, olympia hotel can can easily maybe just kind of a, a, a adjust uh, to something like that. I'm pretty sure Kinsey is a really smart person and, and I don't think you will let your conference facil facilities to stay empty for too long. So, I mean, you just let's give some base for, space for new ideas. So that's why it's good also to attend on these webinars uh, just, to, just to see w what might be the future options uh, for fa uh, facilities. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, uh, hotels or Can I step in regarding the price wars? Very short comment. <laughs> yeah? Very short comment regarding price wars. The main problem that I see in Baltic, particularly capitals, the price wars are not triggered by the COVID uh, crisis. The price wars was the normal state for the low season here always. And I know I mentioned some very low rates, yeah? But we have to come back and see that even before COVID was not even in sight uh, January, December, four-star hotel, three, uh, 35 euro with breakfast, two people uh, downtown was no problem to book. Yeah? So, and, I, and if, you comp if I was comparing for the Milano, which was really before one day before full lockdown, so you, you, you wouldn't get anything below 100 euros. Yeah? And that's a mindset we have to change. The discount 
is not creating the demand. So that's that that's we have to learn, and uh, and I think that that could give a prosperity for hotels as well. So thank you for that's from my side. Absolutely, I think from my side, just three comment as well. I think, Armory, it's amazing. You have this. I think I will call this a little bit wishful thinking because I believe that we will need to move back to the revenues and the average cost by 2018 level. It will require some three, four years, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Really, it's it's I think more or less realistic approach from my side. And also when we move back to 2009 as well, it took as well I think three, four years to move back to decent level. And yeah, I would go with three. Actually, four years. if I, if I may, I just saw the some research like it was like Baltics, the ADR and occupancies from the 2019 crisis. It took six years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yanis. Change your mindset to positive one as well. Four years. It's just data. It's just data. <laughs> Thank you. For uh, maybe we can go over to to, to the next question. Uh, maybe also regarding price. What is going to happen now uh, is that our corporate companies are going to try to 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 use this uh, period to to decrease corporate rates because that is also something that happens. Uh, I think the thing that we need to try to do to, to remember is uh, that the same as with public prices, it's not going to increase our corporate travel if we, if we, if we lower our rates, because I mean, moreover, we're going to have like um, higher um, uh, cost anyway. Uh, so I say try to keep it at the same level, or maybe also just uh, try to avoid to, to have too large uh, um, uh, discounts but also uh this negotiated on maybe one or two room types that you always have the level of control on it now we have another question and it is also relating um what we were talking about yeah it's a scenario about international flight recovery time to back to uh, 2019 this level will be reached somewhere 2023 and 2024 so how do we feel about that so the international travel flight uh, that um uh, scenario yata is is um uh, forecasting what can we say about that I can reply to that if you want, if I don't hear anything to, uh, from the other participants. Take this as a no. Please do, Anne-Marie. Yeah, I, th I think actually this is, this is not uh, a strange thing, but then a flight actually is going to be a dip bit different from, from, from hotels anyway. Um, it's predicted that the international flights, so the long, uh, longer flights, they are going to be decreasing to, to 2023, 24, rightfully so. Um, uh, there, there might be some restrictions, but also I think this is, this is usually what is happening when in, in time of insecurity, we stay closer at home. Uh, but we see that that uh, flights um, within Europe uh, uh, already are coming back a little bit. Uh, I heard numbers saying that they think that um, European flights, they might come back around uh, next year to the to, to same level, but differently. Uh, maybe uh, not as many um, uh, passengers, uh, because maybe we, we still have some restrictions on flights. Uh, but also, I mean, what we, what we found out this last period is that it's actually quite healthy to to try and, um, um, and 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 avoid flying because I mean we've seen also that uh, that uh, levels of uh, our um, how do you say how uh, the, the the way we we um, uh, ooh, can't speak English anymore um, global heating uh, is, is 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 not really going down because that it's going to take a longer time but i mean our influence on nature is is actually a little bit more positive than than, than before and you see also that um flights uh, that they, they got the the um, uh, money from 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 all the governments uh but usually with this demand on it they need to be safer they need to be cleaner with that, actually, I see that we are already on two o'clock. I see it also on Kim's clock behind him. So uh, with that, uh, maybe we see we say thank you very much. We will send the recording after the webinar. If you would like to get in touch with any one of us, uh, you will get our contact details here and you can see them again if you look back on the video. Thank you so much for being here. Hope we were inspiring. Thank you, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.